So what's a supercar doctor? It's called the Bentley Continental GT. Oh my goodness. So 0 to 60 in 3 seconds. Yeah, around 3 sir. 3, 3.2 meters. That's the number of seconds my heart stopped beating, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Speed is of essence when I do procedures. Speed? Speed. Okay. Because somebody having a heart attack, uh. it's a question of uh, seconds, uh. not minutes. Uh. Good morning folks, it's uh, about 6, 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning. And for a change, I'm not riding my motorcycles. So a few days ago, I met an interesting personality, a doctor, a cardiologist, whose passion happens to be cars and not just any cars, but uh, supercars. And so this morning, he has invited me to go for a drive with him and some of his uh, other supercar buddies. And that's where I'm headed. So I thought I'll take the GoPro along and uh, you know, capture the experience as we go along, as we drive. And hopefully you'll have in this an interesting vlog to watch. So stick around. You know, I've never um, been in a supercar before and um, I've always had this fascination for cars. So I'm really looking forward to this. Not used to seeing this windscreen on a Sunday morning but I think it's good to mix things up once in a while Good morning doctor, how are you? I am fine sir, where are you sir now? I am on intermediate ring road Okay So I think I should be It says I am there about 15 minutes, 17 minutes No, I am at the gate only Oh you are at the gate? Oh okay, <laughs> okay cool cool I will see you shortly Turns out The doctor is as excited as I am About this drive you know, my fascination for cars goes back uh, years and uh, to be honest, it began courtesy my dad. He was an engineer from uh, REC Suratkal, first batch and uh, he had this habit of tinkering around with his car and uh, I remember the ambassador, he was always partial to the ambassador initially. So every weekend that he was home, and uh, he would do something on this car he would open up the engine you know be doing something and i was the oldest and so i had to always be around and i was like the chotu that you have you know the mechanics if you go to a garage an old school sort of garage there'll always be a chotu who will be hanging around the main ustad that that was my role i was just supposed to hang around and pass him things and uh, you know, if things got a little warm, go and get him a cold one and uh, things like that. So, initially I was a rather grudging participant to that. But then, you know, since I didn't have a choice, I began uh, developing an interest. So, those days you wouldn't see so many cars, you know, uh, as we call them, foreign cars. And there was this magazine, I don't remember what the name of the magazine was. And this magazine was a catalogue of you know, I think all those imported cars, it was a foreign mag and it had all the details in terms of the make, model, engine capacity, price, etc. Not that it made any relevance to us, you know, sitting in uh, India, we were in uh, Bombay or Mumbai back then. And, uh, but, you know, he would make sure that he got every issue of that and uh, it was around so I too would take a look at it. And I would see some of those uh, amazing supercars in that. And uh, this is years ago, decades ago. And today I'm going to be sitting in one of them. So it should be fun. Really looking forward to this. Well, that's my friend, Dr. Anand Shinoy, an eminent cardiologist. But his passion is fast cars. Yes, absolutely. Uh, supercars. Yes. So, what's a supercar, doctor? Anything more than 500 horsepower. Anything more than 500 Anything horsepower. Anything more than 1000 horsepower is hypercar. So, this is a supercar? Yes, it's about 520 bhp. 520 bhp, and that's a. Uh... Okay. 
the R8 V10. Fantastic! Look at that beauty there. So, how did this whole uh, fascination for cars happen? As I don't know, probably because my profession is so you know, taxing. Huh. So, you need something to keep your mind off. Yeah, and how long have you been dabbling in supercars? Uh, probably from 2014. <laughs> wow. And how many cars do you own? Right now, 10. 10 cars. You know, I have two motorcycles that I can barely ride. Huh? <laughs> and you, being such a busy, very busy in your profession, how do you manage time with 10 cars? I think weekends. Weekends. And then most of the cars I take them out to uh, work. To work. So he's probably the coolest doctor who arrives at... Uh, can I mention where you work? Yeah, you can. Uh, he's probably the coolest doctor who arrives at Manipal Hospital. Uh, so everybody I guess knows you when they come yes, in. Yes, I think yeah, quite uh, known in my community. Yeah. The community to be having a lot of passion for cars here. Fantastic. And look at that. That is sheer poetry in red, huh? Other two are here, which we'll be taking now. So the drive for today huh. is uh, 2008 Bentley Continental GT Speed. GT Speed. It's a W12 engine. Okay. 600 horsepower. 600 horsepower. Yes. And that's the beauty right there. Three months. This is your latest? Yes, sir. I mean, it's as stunning on the inside as it is the outside. Yes, huh? sir. Fantastic. Have a seat, sir. This is my first time ever in a Bentley. <laughs> in a supercar. In a Bentley, of course. I think today is going to be a day of many firsts. It's called the Bentley Continental GT. There is a normal Continental GT, okay. which is like a flying spur there, sedan. Okay. That is about uh, around 560 horsepower with the W12 engine. Okay. Now, the speed is a version above the Continental GT. Okay. That means unlike a sedan, there is a two-door coupe. So, uh. there are four seats, but nobody can sit at the back. Okay. So, it's basically two seats. Okay. So, it's like a sports car. The engine is W12, but it is more refined. And uh, it's about 600 horsepower. So, when you say W12, that's what? Uh, that's equal to basically a, a V10? Unlike, uh, yeah. So, V10 is all the... Uh, Engine cylinders bank, engine banks huh. are replaced in a V. The Correct. Cylinder banks are in V shape. This is the W makes it compact, so two V's added together. Ah, okay, okay. So V12 normally engine will be too broad and long. Okay. But uh, uh, W12 is. Can you feel the uh, the power? Huh? <laughs> it's like I can feel not the acceleration. I can feel the thrust. Huh? Oh, I don't think I'll ever be in a rocket going to space, but yes, sir. This is like a this is all wood and leather, sir. Uh, it's real wood, yes, like Rolls Royce. Uh, Bentley is uh, handcrafted in crew, England. Okay, so that's the home of Bentley. So, every, every Bentley is handmade, and every Bentley, uh, but Bentleys are generally more powerful, more faster. You can, in fact, participate in any drag race. Uh, in a Bentley? Yes. Okay, sir. Oh, this is... Oh! <laughs> oh, my God. Oh! I think 0 to 60 is about uh, 3.2 seconds in this 3.2. <laughs> Just three, which is, you know, can envy a Porsche or a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. Not the new generation Lamborghinis, uh. because they are much more quicker. The car we are going to see today is uh. it's called SVJ 63. There are only 63 pieces in the world. That's a Lamborghini. Yes, Lamborghini, a model called SVJ, Super Velos Jota. 
Okay. It's a V12. 63 denotes the year when Lamborghini was formed. Ah, okay. The company. So it's a commemorative. Company. So how do you decide? So daily you take one car to work? Uh, there is a timetable for each car. Oh. Yes, when you have 10 cars, you have to do that. Yes, and uh, at least you need to start those cars at least once or twice a week, otherwise because uh, you know battery goes for battery hours. Goes, okay so what are the cars that you have that is uh, the bentley that really, yes this is the one of the cars the bentley then we saw the r8, r8 you saw yes then i have a rs5 audi rs5 audi rs5 then i have a bmw m5 bmw m5 okay then i have a audi s8 v10 a very rare car Audi S8 V10. Yes, it's a sedan with a V10 engine, which Audi produced from 2006 to 2010. Okay. And a very limited production run, and there are only 10 cars in India, I understand. So, okay. Uh, it's like driving a Lamborghini in a sedan, sedan form. You know? In a sedan body. Yes. Ah, okay. And then what is plastic? Okay. Then uh, there is a Range Rover Vogue. Okay. Supercharged petrol, that's again about 500 horses. Okay. Then I have a G Wagon, G55. Oh, a G Wagon, that's the Mercedes. Yes. Okay. Then uh, there is a ML63, which actually will be catching shortly, is gone to the bunk. Okay. To fuel up, which will be following uh, in the drive today. This is a pilot car? Yes. Okay. ML63 AMG. Okay. And uh, Audi Q7 and a Jaguar XF diesel. Wow, so is there a favorite that you have or it's like each car has its you know uh, own character or own DNA Correct, so it's like asking a mother who's your favorite child. Yes <laughs> <laughs> We have to take care of them like children like uh, They're very temperamental. It, their cars are very temperamental. Yeah, yes. and the more longer you own a car I think you can feel it sometimes a lot of car uh, enthusiasts will say that uh, they treat Carl as their own family, I'll be frank with you. As their own family? Yes. They're an extension of their family. Uh, Most of the car enthusiasts I know, they really, they love cars. They have a lot of love and affection for them. And obviously you're very possessive about very these babies. Yes, yes sir. So your initial feeling of the car, how is it sir? Oh, it's just, it's exhilarating to say the least. Oh my goodness. So 0 to 60 in 3 seconds. Yeah, around 3 sir, 3, 3.2 meters. That's the number of seconds my heart stopped beating, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and thankfully I'm with a cardiologist, so, you know, in case of a situation, I'm sure he'll do, oh, yes. he will revive me. You know, somebody who's driving it, you feel it, but somebody who's probably not sat in one of these. Yes sir. I'll so actually the... have my feet on the ground here, trying to find the brakes, <laughs> the imaginary brakes. Just fuel up, sir. A typical Indian, this thing is kitna deti hai. This car, you can't talk. You cannot say all that, huh? No. So it's like uh, how many liters to a kilometer, or is still kilometers per liter? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it will be how many liters for a kilometer? How many liters for a kilometer? Such cars, yes, sir. Ah. So doctor is uh, being very diplomatic about the response. So you get a sense of what it's about. I'm sure if you Google, you'll get to know what is the exact uh, mileage. But hi, this is Dr. Kinney, who I told you. Hi, 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 how are you? Yeah. Nice to meet yeah, you. Where's your wife? She's in the car. Porsche 911 Carrera S. Okay, it's already gone <laughs> out of view. The orthopedicians are generally very aggressive. Really? They operate because a lot of hammering and you, uh, know, you need a lot of hard work to do. Bones, fixing bones, uh, fixing fractures, putting plates, drilling screws and all. What about cardiologists? Cardiologists, fine. Our work is very fine. Tactile sensation. Okay. Passing the wire in the coronaries, different arteries. So you have to be more uh, deft and yes, nimble. Yes, nimble and deft, yes. Uh, Those are the correct words. Yeah, speed is of essence when I do procedures. Speed? Speed. Okay. Because somebody having a heart attack, uh. it's a question of uh, seconds, uh. not minutes. Uh. So the faster you open up the blocked artery, you can save a life. Uh. So that is reflected in my like for uh. need for speed. Need for speed, even yes. on the road. Yes, sir. <laughs> but not in a bad way. Correct. In a good way. In a Responsible good way. Responsible speed. 
not unnecessary aggressive rash driving as a cardiologist you are responsible for people's lives yes sir right so that same sense of responsibility also carries through yes, when you are on the road driving these fast cars yes sir you got to start calling me kripal doctor uh, out of <laughs> kripal yes a doctor is perhaps the most uh, is the not perhaps is the most noble of all professions yes sir you know the kind of uh, profession i belong to uh, uh, we are helping all the time every patient right because it's a profession so we have to uh, also earn correct but then you know for example giving this i don't think in any other profession people give so many discounts to those who can yes. perhaps afford and you know like uh, doing free procedures is unheard of but we do all the time even i am working in a corporate hospital uh. i do a lot of free procedures for patients routinely okay there's a lot of doctors across bangalore across india who do the same thing okay especially surgeons cardiac surgeons are the best of them especially post covid they have a lot of respect is because everybody was sitting at home and you know cops are the ones who are working doctors yeah. are the working guys who are working correct so correct so many doctors cops got infected in the first and the second wave many of them lost their lives i at least lost four doctors i know okay who were in their prime okay that's another reason why because life is finite uh covid taught us that and uh you should follow your passion money is not everything in life so one life live it live it yeah yeah like how you follow your passion and do vlogs it all takes a lot of effort yeah people yeah. don't understand it's not easy i know how difficult it is what the work what you do that's why you have such respect for you <laughs> you're very kind we just focus on uh, what gives us happiness and what brings happiness to the lives of those around us yes sir and i think that's what we should focus on and like doctor said one life live it advice from a doctor uh, advice from a doctor a cardiologist who is out saving lives every single day and uh, he too needs to live his life whatever your passions may be try to make some time for it go back to that passion go back to what gave you joy many decades ago perhaps you've not gone back to it yet but true sir now is always a good time to do that like doctor said life is finite and life is so unpredictable i think that's very the one thing that the last yes. two years have taught us very right you can never take anything for granted